Dear students, we are back with our geometric design course. We started with the module 2 and we have looked at the cross sections for different categories of roads. After that, in the previous interaction, we talked about the various factors which control the cross section width. Then we looked at the cases under which the width needs to be increased and then we started with the elements of the cross section and the first two elements which we have looked at is the carriageway width and the shoulder width and thickness. Now, we are going to start further and we will see that what are the other elements along with in the case of the shoulder width and thickness we have not completed for all type of category of roads. So, we will be looking at that also at the start and then we will go for median and then finally, we will close this interaction with the roadway width. Let us look at the leftover portion of the shoulder width. The leftover portion was related to the multi-lane highways and specifically to the six-lane highways. In this case of six-lane highways, when we look at the plane and rolling terrain, the conditions for the segregation or the categorization of the information remains the same. You have four categories, one is related with the open country, another one is related with the built up area, the third one is related with the approaches to the great separated structures and the fourth one is related to the approaches to bridges. If you look at the these three categories, they are more of a constrained nature as compared to the first one where the land is available on the sides. When we look at the width of the shoulder, then it is being talked in terms of paved or earthen, a combination of that or otherwise it is going to be only paved under the extreme restricted conditions of the availability of the land in an area. So, if what we see here is that we get 1.5 and 2 and that becomes 3.5. When we are talking about the built up area, then it is 2 and 2. So, we have the same values here and they are more or less the same values in the case of a four lane highways. When we are looking at the six lane highways under the mountainous and steep terrain, then the values here for the restricted conditions again has been taken together and what we find is that it is 0.25 plus 1.5 meters and this is raised on both the sides as a paved shoulder under the constrained conditions and that makes it 1.75 meters. In the case of open country, we have 1.5 plus 1 on the valley side and then how we are going to provide it is that we have 1.5 meters on the hill side, but when we talk about the valley side, we have a combination and here it is 1.5 plus 1 that is 2.5 meters being provided. So, that is the way we are going to provide these shoulders on a six lane highways. <coughs> now, few more information which is there with respect to the mountainous and steep terrain and when the six lane highways are going to be constructed for that. The very first thing is if the retaining wall with the parapet is provided, then earthen shoulders on valley side is not required. Now, of course, this is not a photograph of a six lane highway, but what you can see towards the right hand side is that there is a parapet wall and we do not have the earthen shoulder on this side, the paved shoulder is being taken up to the parapet wall and that is the end of the shoulder. Another thing is that the carriageway with the paved shoulder on both the sides shall convert to the section of the grade separated structure at a distance of 50 meter or at the end of the retaining wall or RE wall whichever is higher. Now, what does that mean? This means that you are coming with a particular profile. So, this is a carriageway being provided and then we have a shoulder on either side. So, this is shoulder on this side and a shoulder on other side. Now, when you are coming to a grade separated structure, so the grade separated structure may not be having the earthen shoulder. There may be a possibility of providing a paved shoulder subjective, you have that much space and you can do that. So, if our section is going to be like this, in the case of a grade separated structure, then what we need to do is we have to converge to the section of the grade separated structure 50 meters before the start of that. So, what we are going to do is then finally, we are going to culminate into this sort of a condition. So, we will be getting into the flare condition here and by doing that flare, what we are section we are going to get is the section which is there at the grid separated structure. If the retaining walls are being provided, then 
that is to be considered retaining wall, RE wall or the abutments which are being provided. Another thing is the retaining wall or RE wall that should have a crash barrier on its top. So, subjective any vehicle goes out of control and hits on the outer side. So, in that case we should have a crash barrier being provided on that uh, parapet wall or a RE wall so that it deflects back and comes back on the carriageway. Then another thing is and that is where you can see here that this crash barrier has been provided here and that is also a curve. So, the two conditions are there and for those two conditions it is going to serve the function. Now, in case the retaining wall or RE wall is not abutting the paved shoulder, then the section beyond 50 meter from the structures shall be as for the open country. So, we have looked into the table. In the table, we found that for a built up area for the approaches to the grade separated structures or the other structures which are there like flyovers, the widths are different as compared to the open country. So, what it says is that if your RE wall is not abutting, then it means you have the space so as to carry forward the section which is there on an open country with isolated built up area over this particular structure and that is when it is being taken or is still if there is a possibility of transforming the widths because of any other reason then the flare which is being provided is at a rate of 1 in 25. So, that is the way we are going to do it. The another thing is the crash barrier shall be provided in the earthen shoulder area. So, you can see that here the earthen shoulder area is there and the crash barrier has been provided on that. So, again this is again a safety side towards the valley also. When we look at the expressway, then in the case of expressway, we have the paved shoulder which is 3 meters wide and beyond that a northern shoulder which is 2 meters wide. So, that has to be provided on both the sides of the carriageway, the main carriageway which can be a 4 lane divided or a 6 lane divided system. So, here you can see that uh, we have a paved shoulder and then after paved shoulder then we have a kacha shoulder which is being provided which is also having a grass cover at the moment. Now, paved shoulder whenever it is being provided then it is going to be of the same specification as that of a carriageway. So, that is uh, one thing which we have discussed previously also. In the case of expressways when the earthen shoulder is provided then the thickness of that earthen shoulder is 200 mm which otherwise in the previous cases was 150 mm if you remember and this is granular in nature. So, this is the way the uh, shoulders are going to be provided on the side of the carriageways and that has to be on the either side of the carriageway. It is not in only one particular side we are going to provide it. Depending on the conditions in the center, the type of median etcetera which has been provided, some changes are going to be there in those. So, when we have a median let us talk about it and we say that what, what are the various functions for which these medians are going to be provided. The main function of the median is that we need to improve upon the safety on the road and this safety is related to all the all type of road users, whatever type of vehicles are there, whatever motorized non motorized vehicles are there, pedestrians are there as well as they also can help in protecting the property on the side by way of the designs which we have incorporated. So, what are the various safety features or what are the various things which is are going to be met when we provide a median. The very first thing is if the median is being provided when we say it is in the center of the road. So, you have this carriageway in the center of the road a median has been provided. So, the traffic is moving in this direction here and the traffic is moving in the opposite direction. There is no possibility of a head on collision in this case. Segregation of fast and move slow moving traffic. If the traffic which is slow moving is substantial in nature, then we can have a separate lane for that. And there what we found is that we can have a slow moving traffic and in this case again to as to segregate them we can provide one median at this side also. Safety of vulnerable road users. Now, vulnerable road users those can be like pedestrians. So, we are going with the channelizations or the other different type of separations in those cases. So, they are the things we are going to talk there. Segregation of through and local traffic. We have a lot of development on the side of the road and this development is going to induce a local traffic 
and this is a high speed facility or high class facility. So, the speed is going to be very high. Now, we have to segregate these two traffic and therefore, we can provide a lane on the other side which is a say service lane and the local traffic is going to move on this one. So, the local traffic is here and the, the through traffic is going to be on the main carriageway. Separation of turning movements by way of channelization, they will not be defined as a median. So, it is a sort of a channelization which we will be talking when we will take up the intersections. Reduction or elimination of the headlight glare that is going to be dependent on this width of the median or if we have a depressed median which can be a one possibility we are going to look at all of these things and then if we go with the arboriculture on this. So, we have the shrubs here and these shrubs are of that much height that whatever the headlight height is there which is 0.75 meters from the surface which we discussed previously. So, if that is coming up to that or a bit more than that, so it is going to eliminate the glare caused due to the headlight. Now, when all of these things are happening and the median is helping us in all these different forms, then what is getting in terms of a benefit on the operation of the traffic on that particular road is the improvement in the level of service. That means, with the ease and comfort, all of the vehicles are moving while maintaining the safety of not only their own vehicle, but as well as the other vehicles too. But medians are not going to be provided in all of the cases. So, there are a few cases where they needs to be avoided. Now, what are those cases? The presence of significant tidal flows. The tidal flows means that if you have a road like this and in the center you have provided a median suppose, the traffic is moving in this direction or in this direction. All of a sudden, we found there is a lot of traffic here. So, this is a tidal flow. So, it keeps increasing at a certain point of a time and decreases and then increases a lot, but the lanes which have been provided here, they are not being able to handle this flow, but the other side, there is not much traffic. If you remember in one of the photographs previously, I have shown that almost 90, 95 percent traffic was there on one side and on other side it was not more than 5 percent of a traffic. So, if that is a case and you have provided a median, then the optimal uses of the lanes which have been provided would not be possible. So, instead of using 2 and 2 lane, we can say at one point of a time 3 lanes are being used in one area direction and one lane is being used in the other direction. So, the tidal flows if they are there, then it is not good to provide. Then the individual carriageways or divided by physical and permanent element are inadequate to handle the peak hour flows. So, that is the same thing. So, if you found that the traffic moving in a particular direction because of say certain attractions here is quite high and this is not being able to handle the amount of traffic which is there. So, that the traffic which could be handled is say 2000 vehicles per hour and now the vehicles which are coming is 3000 vehicles per hour then in that particular case also providing this physical or the permanent medians is not a good idea. What we can work with is a temporary one. So, they can be shifted to this direction or the other direction either this way or this way depending on the demand uh, or the traffic which is going to be there in a particular direction. Or there is an intense roadside development without making provision of a frontage or the service road. We talked that there should be a service road. When we are looking at a local traffic, when we are looking at a through traffic, we should provide a service road. We should have a frontage road that is another way we can define it. But say if these things are not being provided and you have provided a median, then also the lot of traffic which is going to be there in a direction is going to make a problem. And one another case is that if you have a road which is only two lane wide, then in that case also the medians should be avoided. So, these are few cases in which the medians should be avoided, they should not be provided. Now, when we talk about the width of the median, then how we are going to look at it? 
whether it should be a 2.5 meter wide, it should be a 4.5 or 5 meter wide, it should be 7 meters, 9 meters, 12 or 30 meters. And if you remember that all of these things we have seen when we looked at the various profiles for different categories of roads. So, the very first thing is what amount of land is available? Is it an open country or it is a built up area? So, you have more of restrictions here or it can be with respect to the type of facility. Say you are on bridge, you cannot provide the medians or the wide medians at all. Type of terrain condition, we have looked at these terrain conditions and their effect when we were talking about even the shoulders. So, the type of terrain whether it is plain, rolling, mountainous or a steep they are also going to make a difference because then again this is going to be correlated with the availability of land. The cost of land is another issue. You have the land available in an area, but the cost is so high and if you have to acquire it, then the cost of project is going to increase a lot. So, then probably you are going to compromise something in terms of the width of the median. The type of the traffic which may require a segregation. So, segregation can be in terms of motorized or non motorized, it can be in terms of fast or slow, big or small, what type of that segregation is required. So, this is also need to be looked at, but then this is also going to be correlated with respect to the composition as well as volume, because that is going to define that whether we need to provide a separate lane for a type of a traffic or not. Traffic maneuvers that is related more with the channelization. So, we have a right turning, we have a left turning, the traffic is moving straight, there is a merging or diverging traffic. So, all these type of maneuvers are there and if we have to segregate them, then what are the ways in which that can be done is what we are looking here. Directional distributions, so that means we are talking in terms of a divided system to be provided, so that we can segregate the traffic in this direction also. Drainage considerations, safety, there are so many things which can be there which may be going to make a difference because if you have provided a median, it may happen that on this side you need to provide a channel so that the water which is flowing from here because of the camber gets filled and then it is taken longitudinally as well as transversely out of the system. And safety we have of course talked about, so what amount of safety, what type of safety is to be ensured depends that that what can be the width of a system. Here what you can see is the different type of uh, medians which are being shown. The first one is uh, a raised median and this raised median is uh, taking a less of a space in the sense that it is a concrete system, but along with that concrete system you have a clearance or buffer on the side. If you remember I told that uh, it is roughly around 2.5 meters and 1 meters as a buffer on this side and that side that total makes it 4.5 meters. We have discussed it about it in one of the profile conditions. Then if you look at 2, what we have is a depressed median or a median which is being left open without having any other development. Tomorrow if there is a requirement of an upgradation then probably if the space is available we can take a lane from here and here and in that case this median is going to be narrower tomorrow and we have to see that what type of a median whether in terms of this raised median we have to provide or otherwise this is sufficient. Another case which is being shown is here in 3 where this is a raised median which is having some width can be 1.2 meters or more than 1.2 meters. It is a raised system, but it is clearly being marked on the sides. You can see the black and white patches are there and this is what is a curved stone which we talked in the case of uh, the profiles also. Here it is a flush median, so this is a case 4. So, where we are talking about a flush median and the vehicles have got separated out. If there is an emergency, then this can be utilized for the movement of those emergency vehicles also. So, this is that much wide that that can be utilized in that sense. 
Now, let us look at the median widths in different environments. The first one which we are taking is the urban roads. Now, in the case of urban roads, we already said that if it is a two lane road carriageway, then we are not going to provide a median on that. If it is a say a three lane system, then obviously, you do not have a center and we should not go for a provision of a median. So, what it says is that if the roads are four lanes or more, then we should provide a median there. As far as possible, the medians should be wide enough, but then it depends on the availability of the land. The wider medians if being provided, then they can also allow the U-turning. So, if you have a say only this much median is being provided and you have a big vehicle which is here, then the turning of this vehicle is going to be something like this. So, what you found is that is taking lot of space and there is a clearance here. But if you have already done a case where this median has been widened at this point, so it you allow a driver to take a turn with the higher radius and that is how it becomes more smoother. Transition in width if required shall be done at a rate of 1 in 15 to 1 in 20. In the shoulders we talked about 1 in 25 there. So, if this type of a flare is there or a change is there, then the rate is 1 in 15 to 1 in 20. Now, what are the minimum widths of the medians? If we have a pedestrian refuse, that means there are this is a section and say this is a median here, there are people standing on the either side of the road and they want to cross either this way or that way. So, the traffic is continuously moving here what the pedestrians need that they need a space where they can stand. So, first of all they have crossed one side and then they stand there check out whether it is safe enough to cross further and they will cross again. So, this is space if it is being provided that, that is known as a pedestrian refuse which should be minimum 1.2 meters wide. Median lane for protecting vehicles making a right turn is 4 meters and desirably 7.5 meters. What does that mean is it says that you are coming here. So, if there is a vehicle which is coming from this side and takes here and then come and is going to take a right turn. So, what we are doing is that we are providing an space here for that vehicle to be stopped which can be say 2.5 or 3 meters wide. And if we talk about this one as minimum 1.2 meters as we said here. So, 2.5 plus 1.2 minimum is 3.7. So, what we are saying is a minimum of 4 meters should be provided here at this point. Then absolute minimum is 1.2 meters whereas, desirable minimum is 5 meters. When there are vehicles which are crossing at grade, so the crossing conditions are there. So, the and these vehicles are crossing like this or they are crossing in this manner. So, at this particular conditions if the medians needs to be used, they can be wide enough as 9 to 12 meters. When we look at the rural highways, then in the case of rural highways, the minimum desirable is 5 meter. The absolute minimum in the restricted area is 3 meters. When we are talking about the bridges, long bridges and viaducts, then the minimum is 1.2 meters, but desirably we should provide 1.5 meters there also. And in the case of hilly and rolling terrain, we have to look at the topography and see that what are the widths which are feasible to be provided depending on what are the total width which is available and then you know, deduct from there the number of lanes which are to be provided or if there is a requirement of a footpath, then we can see we are left with something and that can be provided as a width of a median. Now, here we are talking about the median width and again this is for a multi lane system multi-lane system again we have talked about this in the previous slides also. That means, we are talking about the four lane and six lane divided highways. The categorizations are more or less remains the same wherever the road is passing that particular sections are being talked here. And the minimum width of the median that depends on how the median is being provided. It may happen that on the carriageway the median is being provided in the raised form or on the carriageway the median is being provided in the depressed form these are the two conditions which can be there and that is already being looked at in the case of cross section elements. Now, when you look at here the values, so first categorization is the plain and rolling terrain, another one is a mountainous and steep terrain. In the case of plain and rolling terrain, again we have two categorizations that is raised and depressed. 
In the case of raised one, the values are 5 meters if you are in the open country or if you are approaching to the grid separated structure. But if you are in a built up area, then the value can be 2.5 meters because this is a restricted condition. You do not have much space available for these type of development. So, that restriction is there. In the case of depressed median in the open country, so this can be 7 meters minimum. So, we are providing this as 7 meters wide. But in the case of built up area, in the case of approaches to the grid separated structures, obviously there is no possibility of providing a depressed median and that is where the values have not been specified for those cases. If you talk about the mountainous and steep terrain, the raised median is only being talked and this raised median uniformly is being taken as 2.5 meters across all the categorizations uh, wherever the road is passing through different conditions. Now, what are the additional things which we are going to talk about when we have a median? So, the very first thing is that a 0.6 meter of the depressed median alongside the carriageway shall be paved and that is what we have seen when we looked at the profiles also. So, you have a carriageway, you have a depressed median here like this. So, what it says is that on this side, this is 0.6 meter which should be paved additionally and we are talking about the carriageway on this side. And then here if you remember the crash barrier was provided subjective to the this particular width. So, this is one thing. Another thing it says is the metal crash barriers, they should be provided on either side of the depressed median for width of median up to 9 meters. So, if this is more than 9 meters, then crash barrier is not required it becomes wide enough so that if due to any error if the vehicle goes into the median it is not going to hit the vehicles on the other side. Shrubs should be used in the depressed median so means we should go for a sort of a plantation and that helps in reducing the headlight glare. The other way of doing it is to use the metal or plastic screens they are also anti glare materials. So, they can be used on flat stretches, horizontal curves, but the height can be up to at the maximum 1.5 meters. Suitable drainage system has to be provided so that there is no stagnation of water here in the median and that is the reason is that there should be a drain here at the center of this median. So, whatever water flows from this direction and this direction is being collected in this drain and taken longitudinally and at one point of a time it is going to be drained out from the system towards the site. Transition rate if any, if it is there then that is done at a rate of 1 in 20. So, that is how we are doing it. Then another thing is that you are having a long road and there is a median being provided in the center like this and you have two lanes on that side and two lanes on this side. Somebody has come wrongly on this particular section, but was not supposed to be on this. So, now there is no opportunity for this driver to take a U-turn and go back. It should not happen that there is a median continuously from Delhi to Bombay and then you cannot take a turn in between. So, what it says is that we should have the openings at a certain level. So, if this is going like this, then say we have a opening here. And this opening, they should be provided at a spacing not less than 2 kilometers. So, this distance which we are talking, it should not be less than 2 kilometers here. But one another thing which is there is that sometimes we can provide these openings in a clear manner. Sometimes we can say that there are further intermittent opening which is being provided, but this is a closed one and can be those barriers can be removed at any time if there is an emergency due to which one lane has to be closed and the another and the traffic has to be moved to the other lane and that is how the both directional traffic is going to be on the other side. Then this width of the median, this is what we are talking, it should not be less than 20 meters. Additional openings as I said controlled in nature needs to be provided for the emergency conditions, for repair, for maintenance, anything can happen. In case of traffic waiting for U-turn at a median, a shelter lane of 3.5 meter wide shall be provided, which I have already defined previously. Then in case a service road is provided in a section passing through a habitation, so because you need to segregate the local traffic as well as the through traffic. 
then the distance between the exit from a service lane and the median opening that is what is being talked. So, you have a development on this side, we have provided a median here. So, local traffic is moving on this side, main traffic is moving on this particular side okay. and then there is a median here. So, the traffic is moving in this direction because it is a divided, it is a two lane system say and we have providing an opening in the median at this location. So, this is my median and this is opening there and then there is a possibility that this continues here also, but this is my say exit for this traffic and entry in this form, what it is trying to talk that is what we are looking. It says that, that this distance between the you can see the distance between the exit from the service road and the median opening shall not be less than 150 meters. So, that means this and this, this should not be less than 150 meter that is one thing. Second thing is that if there is a vehicle which comes from here like this, then this vehicle has to move like here, then it will starts deviating. So, there is a weaving action which is there and then it will come to this particular location so as to take a U turn. So, this vehicle is going to accelerate here, this vehicle is doing a weaving action here and is decelerating here. So, three actions are going in this particular case acceleration, weaving and deacceleration and whatever is the distance which is required to do that that is another criteria which needs to be looked at and whichever is higher has to be provided as a distance between these two things. So, this is another important aspect related to it. Then another point which is a change is that the opening, the spacing of the opening that should not be less than 5 kilometers. In the case of 4 lane it was 2 kilometers. Rest of the provisions which we have discussed in the case of 4 lane divided system in, in the case of like the 0.6 meter of a strip on the side towards the depressed median or bushes or anti glare systems or all those things they are same here too. So, with this we can close this interaction and we will be continuing with the interaction on the other aspects further. So, we thought of, of taking up the cases of uh, the medians on the expressways and then the roadway width also but that we will be discussing in the next lecture. So, till then thanks and goodbye.